this is the SGX3 webinar, the monthly webinar we started again, or we started from last year. And SGX3 is an NSF Center of Excellence for Science Gateways. I'm Sandra Gazing. I'm the co I'm one of the co-PIs for community engagement and outreach. And Claire Sturm, another co-PI, is also on the call. And it's our pleasure to introduce Anis Afghan and Alex Ostrovsky. Ostrovsky. Sorry for that. <laughs> I hope I said it right the second time. Yep. And um, they will present Exploring the Galaxy Application for Data Sciences. And you see the slide here. So it, it will be interactive if you want to. And with that, I give it to you both and take it away. Uh, thanks, Sandra. Um, yeah, so as, as Sandra said, uh, um, we're going to try to make this um, sort of interactive and really a conversation rather than a presentation. Um, so we have a couple of um, polls in here just to learn more about uh, who is it that we're um, talking to or talking with. Uh, and then there's this interactive portion for which uh, if you want to follow along, you don't have to, but uh, we do recommend it because it gives some, um, you know, well, the first hand experience is always the best. Um, it, it gives you that opportunity and, and this uh, training infrastructure as a service capability within Galaxy allows us to uh, run our jobs right away without waiting in the, the standard queues. Uh, and so the form that's linked from, uh, from this slide um, will allow you to join um, join this group. Um, and you can read more about this uh, training as, a, as an infrastructure um, service um, at the link at the bottom. But uh, I guess one thing to, to keep in mind that's involved, it is only th this um, group is only active today. So uh, uh, tomorrow you'll have to wait in the queue if you want to run these same uh, paths again. Um, and not to say that that's very long, uh, oftentimes job runs instantly, but occasionally trainings need a, a little higher um, uh, dynamic structure. Um, so as uh, you know, when Claire asked um, if we could give a talk about Galaxy um, to this group, um, we decided to do a, a, a sort of an atypical um, or a more generic version of what um, you know, Galaxy is about, and sort of we titled it this uh, "Exploring the Galaxy Application for Data Sciences," um, and, and hopefully we'll sort of demonstrate and, and hear feedback from you guys about uh, Galaxy, not in in the traditional sense in in which um, often people think about it, which is genomic analysis platform, but really uh, an application for uh, data sciences, data scientists, software engineers, uh, system administrators, educators. Um, and so yeah, um, it, I'm, I'm NS, I've been with Galaxy for 15 years this year, um, mostly working on the sort of infrastructure and um, backend components. Um, and, and I'm a company with Alex. Um, Alex, you want to introduce yourself for a sec? Sure. Uh, my name is Alex Ostrovsky. I am at the Hopkins Lab for Galaxy. Uh, this is my fifth year. Wow, already uh, with Galaxy. And I primarily work on tools and some projects that Galaxy gets employed on. Uh, but I kind of am a catch all at this point on whatever needs doing. But again, uh, we really hope for this not to be a presentation, um, but really a conversation. Um, and, and so with that, um, the first thing we wanted to you know, do is uh, wake you up a little bit and, and engage you here. So we have a, a poll. Uh, an interactive one that uh, if you could um, either do it on your phone by scanning this QR code that's displayed uh, or go to uh, slido.com and enter the event or the poll number, um, we'll start seeing um, some um, some answers. Um, and again, this is, um, it's been a few years, I think, since we've uh, given any kind of talk at um, at SGS, SGCI or SGX3 now. Um, and so we, we really were hoping to uh, learn more about who is it that we're talking with um, and can hence um, uh, uh, present the material uh, with, with a slightly 
focus on one topic or another. Um, so it, it looks like we have mostly newcomers. Um, so combined the my first touch point and I dabbled a bit are about 90% of, of 14 people that have um, participated. Um, so, okay, uh, excellent. Uh, we uh, love all users, but we really love the new users. Um, um, and especially with, with new users, I'd like to point out then, please participate in the chat if you have any questions because of that, because we can tailor this a lot easier if you ask us things uh, as they come up. So we'll, uh, we'll move um, forward. And especially given that um, a lot of you are maybe seeing Galaxy here for the first time, um, I'll spend a little more time on the Galaxy project slide itself. Um, so what is Galaxy? So it's um, oftentimes thought of as just software, but it's really also the services. Uh, we'll use one of them today. Uh, and most importantly, it's a community um, that's working in data intensive sciences. Um, it originated nearly 20 years ago uh, as a genomics uh, platform, analysis platform. And it then expanded into more sort of biology domains. Um, and over the past five or eight years or so, um, it's transitioned from being uh, a biology-based um, community and biology-based application to being a data science or an application supporting uh, data intensive sciences uh, with examples of people using it for machine learning, um, which is currently very popular, um, to ecology, um, uh, uh, natural language processing, uh, climate modeling. Um, and, and so it, it keeps growing and we'll see why, why that is. Um, so in addition to the software itself, a large portion of Galaxy is the service that it provides. So um, if you logged on at usegalaxy.org, um, it has that benefit that you can just log on and run uh, substantial um, workloads, um, you know, not only for free, but, um, but, but instantly without having to set anything up. Um, and then the community itself, there, there's... Uh, tens of thousands of people at this point um, that touch and work with Galaxy uh, every year. Uh, and so no matter where you are in the world, you can find um, likely somebody that, that has some expertise or some uh, interest in it. And so there have been now a, a number of communities that formed uh, around special uh, interest areas. Um, and, and so even uh, if there isn't one that's of interest to you, um, new groups form, uh, you know, let's say quarterly or so um, at this point. Um, if we, just for a second, uh, I'm going to, I guess, describe the, the user interface, which we can see on the right. If you go to usegalaxy.org, that's what you will see, which uh, on, so it's predominantly a, a web application. On the left-hand side, we have a toolbox. That's the default view, which we'll talk a lot more about the tools, but those are the, the variety of operations that you can perform. UseGalaxy.org is still predominantly tailored toward um, analysis of biological data, but there are other instances um, that have a toolbox that's tailored to um, other, uh, other domains and other tool sets. Um, on the right-hand side, uh, the green boxes is what we call a history. Uh, those are uh, analysis steps that you've performed. Um, you can see all the inputs, uh, of course, the outputs. Um, you can uh, use the input from a previous previous step in your subsequent step. Uh, and then in the middle, uh, in this case, it's just a landing page. Uh, but this is where the tool form generally uh, loads. And so again, through that graphical uh, web interface, um, you can uh, provide inputs, um, configure parameters, uh, and, and run the tool. And then depending on which tab you hit at the top, um, you can access uh, workflows, um, visualization framework, um, and, and all the sort of collaborative capabilities, uh, um, so, you know, sharing uh, of all, the, all the artifacts that exist in Galaxy. So we'll do this um, in a few minutes, um, but that's kind of the, the, the big uh, picture. 
And so, as I said, Galaxy is, is approaching its um, 20th anniversary um, since, since it was um, initially developed. Um, and, and for the most, most of its life, it's had this um, mantra thing, uh, it, it wants to support acceptable, transparent, and reproducible science. Um, and, and it's survived for 20 years because it, it solves a problem for somebody. It provides that free accessible infrastructure. Uh, it provides training uh, help, and it does that uh, through this worldwide community uh, of people that are not only users, uh, but also contributors and, and, and helpers uh, in, in all aspects of, uh, of its existence. So um, I think I'm going to cut it off there as far as that is, unless there are questions, um, we'll carry on and, and, and let again, um, Alex, feel free to jump in whenever and, and just... Uh, Sure. Um, the, uh, so the next thing we, uh, sorry. Nope, going back, sorry. Do you want to add something? Okay, uh, no, I, I was just uh, primarily going to say from a, like, Ennis is discussing from a very um, high uh, point of view from what you can see Galaxy as, but uh, from a user perspective, it is a very easy way to both perform your analysis in a standardized environment, which is a point that uh, that I think needs to be hit on. It is a standardized environment that is distributed globally. So if you run a tool, you'll get the same output on Galaxy, no matter where you're running Galaxy, which is a very big prob uh, problem, especially, for example, as we're going to be using today in a machine learning space, you'll be generating that um, that model in the same environment every time, no matter who's running it across the world. Uh, we provide free storage and we provide free compute. So this is also very democratic way to allow users who wouldn't necessarily have access to uh, to uh, very large to, to the resources they would need uh, to be able to run these analyses. Cool. Um, so um, I guess I'm. I'm Looking at time, uh, we're gonna have to speed up a bit. Um, so we got another uh, one of these uh, interactive uh, sessions, which again will help us uh, spend a bit more time um, on on you know going forward. So if you could again uh, either use your phone or um, go to slido.com and put in the uh, the code, um, this question ought to pop up, uh, and that ought to help us. Um, um, So uh, while while you guys are uh, looking at the options and, and answering the, the poll, um, the reason we're asking this question is because depending on which way you look at Galaxy is a different thing for different people. Um, so the, the default uh, thinking of, uh, about it is um, you know, it's a data analysis platform, but uh, it's also an infrastructure um, manager. Uh, it's also a tool distribution platform. It is a training platform. And so by seeing who, um, who who's here on this call today, um, we can hit a little harder on um, the, the areas that are maybe more pertinent uh, to the group here. Um, and so it looks like uh, our top three um, Participants are software engineers, data scientists, and uh, domain scientists. Um, so we'll um, um, we'll we'll focus on those um, those areas. Um, all right. Um, and so this is uh, maybe what I just said in um, on the previous slides while we waited. Um, what can Galaxy do for you? Right. So um, foremost. You can upload data either from your machine, from one of the clouds, uh, or a lot of uh, data providers that have been integrated with Galaxy, and then you can analyze that data. So um, Galaxy has uh, thousands of tools that have been integrated with it. Uh, just about any command line tool can be integrated. So if a tool doesn't exist um, in Galaxy, it, it can be added um, fairly, fairly easily. Alex has done, I mean, added dozens, if not hundreds uh, of tools 
um, for example, and so uh, you have a first uh, uh, first contact uh, there. Um, there are multiple domains, as we said, usegalaxy.org is, is mostly focused on genomics, um, but there are other servers that um, um, we'll mention. Uh, and it's all done through the graphical web interface by default, but it does have an API, so it can be scripted um, as well. It's um, a, a learning and a publishing platform in many ways. Um, there are many tutorials, self-driven, we'll see a couple. Um, and, and if you're a professor and educator, you can also publish your methods uh, for students to, uh, to use at their own uh, time. Given we didn't have any educators that uh, will lay off of uh, that material. You can create and share workflows, so we'll do that as well. Um, you can create repeated analyses. You can do this using the graphical web interface. Um, and then for the software engineers, especially if you're developing your own tools and you would like to see them um, used by users or, or uh, published for consumption, uh, integrating them with Galaxy um, gives you that distribution platform. Right? Um, so uh, the Galaxy Toolshed, which is like an app store for Galaxy, contains about 10,000 tools today, uh, and new ones are added, added continuously. Um, and so there are, again, thousands of users that interact with um, Galaxy each month. Um, and so once you get a tool onto the platform, it can be a um, boost to, to adoption. And then again, uh, I didn't see any system administrators on, on the poll, uh, but in case you know somebody, uh, Galaxy does provide ability to um, connect and manage and expose a, a local infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, um, or access uh, uh, infrastructure, for example, and, and maybe we'll touch upon that a bit as well. Um, and so, um, this is where I think the, the presentation mode ends, um, and, and we'll transition into the sort of the interactive and, and hands-on session. Um, so, the idea, I guess, for the remainder of the hour is that we uh, we all or whoever's interested registers at ugalaxy.org um, and, and follows along interactively. Then we will upload um, some data and run a sentiment analysis. I mean, not so much for the analysis itself or the result. Uh, it'll be about uh, uh, movie reviews from IMDb, IMDb um, but really just to demonstrate Galaxy's capabilities um, in, in something that would be more difficult to do and, you know, or possibly very difficult to do, if not impossible in, in like a spreadsheet or locally or so without installing many tools and stuff. Um, then um, depending on time, we'll um, look at extracting a workflow uh, from that so we can experiment with different parameters. Um, and then we'll look at how we can uh, add our own code um, to Galaxy through uh, interactive tools, namely Jupyter, um, our studio works as well. And then we'll point you all to the, uh, the Galaxy Training Network, which has uh, a few hundred uh, tutorials on a variety of topics um, so people can um, learn and, and um, you know, get into the, the depth of a lot of these um, analyses. Um, so if you've not yet uh, registered, or if you missed the um, the first slide at, at opening, um, here it is again. Uh, if you don't have an account, uh, just create one at usegalaxy.org. It just takes a, a minute or so. Um, and then join this um, group, so to speak, um, at usegalaxy.org slash join dash training slash SDX3. Uh, and that'll give us some preferential treatment uh, for all the jobs that we uh, submit. Mm -hmm. Alex, can you post the link to this in, in chat, please? So I, I, I'll probably exit if I try to copy text. Um, yes, I can absolutely do that. All right, so... Um, this is what uh what we're gonna replicate. Um, and again, uh, please, please uh just either speak up, um, preferably, uh, or just ask questions in the chat. Um, this is all uh, intended for uh, you, you all to 
consume and learn something. So it's not about uh, going through the motions, but it's really about answering questions that you might have. Um, and again, this is an example of what one could do in a galaxy. Uh, we we picked this as, uh, as something that's currently relevant. Um, and demonstrates it, a lot of its capabilities. So um, what we're seeing here is a screenshot of a workflow. Uh, we will, so there is a, and Alex has a link um, to a workflow that you can import into your space in case you get lost and can simply run all the steps, um, but we're eventually gonna build it up ourselves um, step by step. Um, but the idea is here that we, we upload some data, this uh, um, pink box, and, and then go through the sentiment analysis by uh, creating a machine learning model uh, in the orange box, a, a couple of workflow, a couple of steps. Uh, we train that model on some of the inputs that um, we'll upload. Uh, we run the model and then we visualize it, visualize it um, for accuracy uh, to see how it performed. So I'll uh, switch over to, or here I get one more slide, right? Um, so the data we're gonna use is, um, is these four files. Um, so Alex posted the, um, the links into chat. Uh, they're also available at, at this bit.ly link, um, bit.ly slash uh, pbsn0208. Um, so you can uh, copy and paste stuff. Um, and meanwhile, I'll uh, switch over to use Galaxy um, and then start this. Um, so again, as I said, th this is our, the, the landing page, the home page. You got the tools, uh, the landing page slash toolbox in the middle. Sorry, the, the 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 tool form, and then the history on the right hand side, which is in this case uh, empty. So um, while you can get data from a variety of sources uh, directly. Um, you can also upload data either from your local machine uh, or by uh, pasting or fetching a, a URL, which is what we're gonna do. Those uh, Zenodo links that um, we've seen on the slide earlier. Um, so I just put those in the um, in this box. And one thing uh, we wanna do here is select the, the data type um, make sure the Galaxy is able to reason about this data. And so in this case, this is a, a tabular um, data type. So that'll uh, allow Galaxy to visualize the, uh, the results. I'm gonna uh, actually jump in really quickly while we have this still up. The, uh, the uploader is very useful and you can paste URLs uh, here to, to find it and, and it set the data type here manually to tabular. However, Galaxy has sniffers which means that if you just paste the URL for a given data type, there's a better than uh, there's a very good chance that it will read in as the proper data type, assuming it has the proper extensions. Uh, you can also choose to upload files. I don't know if I'm controlling uh, your there it is. Perfect. Uh, you can also choose to upload files from uh, from your own machine. Um, that's pretty easy. It'll open a file selector. I'm currently on Ennis's machine, so I'm not going to screw with that. You can also choose remote files where we have a bunch of servers that we have integrated here. So for example, I work on the Vertebra Genomes project and we have the Genome Arc, which has all of their assemblies uh, published here. Um, in addition, um, if you can set up your own, uh, Ennis does not have any set up. You can set up your own um, AWS buckets and, uh, and um, give your Galaxy instance access that you can set up your own remote data repository if you don't have if you don't have a couple terabytes on your own machine. Um, you can also just paste text here. There's a bunch of other things you can do in this section uh, to upload different data types, but that's less to the scope of, of this training. There's a bunch of other stuff you can do. Do you mind if I take over here, Anas? Oh, go ahead, please. All right, sounds good. You can see all of our data is populating here in the history and the yellow means that it is currently running. It'll turn green when it's complete and you have access. You can take, you can click it to take a little peek. You can see that, that because Ennis put format to be tabular, it's automatically um, set as tabular here. If you had put something else, it would be that. Uh, and if you hadn't said anything, that would be also a question mark until the data had populated. Although very likely it would have taken it because it has a TSV here anyway. Uh, he has named his history here which allows you to very easily identify multiple analyses you might be running at the same time. 
So because of the time constraints of this, uh, I have published a history, and this is analogous to someone in your lab or someone across the country or across the globe having published their own uh, analyses that you can find and run. And I have uh, made it available to you here. You can run it by just clicking this. We're going to take a look really quickly, though, first, because that is what Anis showed before. This is the same workflow that Anis demonstrated, formatted slightly differently. Uh, this is where having control over someone else's screen is a little bit difficult because I can't move things here. But uh, you can click and move here. You can import the uh, it's to run on your own instance of Galaxy, which we're going to be able to do. But you can also add any tools that you want into this and affect the, the workflows. So if I say import here, it'll take a moment. I can start using this workflow. And I can see it here. It has been imported in and you have access to it. You can access the same page by clicking workflow. The main thing I wanted to show here is that I can then edit this workflow that I have taken in from somebody else and say, I have extra things I want to do here. I can click a tool here. It does not matter the tool it shows up and I can add it in. It's as simple as clicking and dragging to, uh, to create steps. And there is lag because I am on a different machine, but that is normally going to connect. There we go. Uh, and that will integrate it into the workflow. We don't want to edit this workflow because this is a training uh, and this has been uh, tested and works, but you can very easily take in someone else's workflow uh, and uh, and run it uh, on your own instance of Galaxy. We've just had some questions uh, in the yeah. chat, so I want to jump over there really quickly. Maximum amount of data you can store on Galaxy. By default, we give you 200 gigs for free, but you can reach out and ask uh, for an increase allocation if you need it. Uh, and very easily. Um, just to, yeah, to explain that a, a, just a bit more. Um, so at usegalaxy.org, the default quota is 250 gigs. Um, there are uh, other Galaxy instances um, that are also public that have their own uh, resource quotas. And ultimately, you can install Galaxy uh, at your local uh, institution. You can install it on your laptop for, for that matter. Uh, and then you're you don't have the same limits, I guess, as the, the public infrastructure. But also, as Alex points out, um, uh, if you need more storage, especially for a, a period of time during like a project or so, um, just reach out to us, and, and that's usually something we accommodate. Yes. Um, so now, just again, because of time constraints, I'm not going to go much deeper into this. You can find a lot more about our editor by A, playing around with it, or B, on our own documentation, which you can find pretty easily uh, right here, which will give you access to training, uh, which we can talk about later. Regardless, so we're going to press Run Workflow. You have all of the data sets you need here. They have been labeled properly here. So we're going to click and choose the proper data sets here. And this is helpfully, I mean, the, the data sets have helpfully been named the same as the files, but they don't have to be. You can name them um, sure. manually in the editor. Uh, the, the, the one above is. Uh... Uh, yep, thank you. Uh, hey, Anis, looks like mm -hmm. a couple of people are having issues with uploading the data uh, with getting the data in do you mind talking to nate really quickly all right um oh wait i'm on your machine crap <laughs> um so we're gonna well really quickly we're going to go over to, and... can you talk to nate i'll uh all right I'll sounds good continue the conversation here for a minute yes i'm um, going to click run workflow before i leave and you can see that all of the steps should populate here in the history once they begin running and with that, I'll hand it back to Ennis. Okay. So um, what Alex did is, you know, he batched uh, a lot of these steps um, into this uh, one tool form or one workflow form. And so they'll all stack here and run uh, in sequence. But uh, I, I guess I wanted to go back a little bit and dissect this. Uh, and say how we how we got there to begin with, right? So as I pointed out, there's a tool panel on the left, um, and from there, if we go down to this um, statistics and visualization section and click the machine learning, which is uh, this kind of you know non biology uh, related section in my mind, um, uh, we can select one of the tools. So this Keras model uh, config is. Uh, 
uh, corresponds to this create a deep learning model architecture um, tool in the tool panel. And this is what a tool form looks like, right? So this is where you choose the parameters. Instead of you know, doing this on the command line, um, you have the same options as uh, the, the, the tool itself offers, but here in this graphical uh, format. And so if I, um, uh, if I did this by hand, but I can also just click the, the rerun button and it will pull up the same parameters with which the job was um, uh, submitted, right? So, um, I, and that's I'm, useful you know, for, for investigating the run, but it's also useful for if you screwed up and put the wrong parameter, you don't have to completely reset and, and with a tool that might take a dozen parameters, set them all manually again, it lets you just find the one that screwed up and reset that and then rerun the job. Um, so I see uh, Martin has a question in, in chat. How do I get to the workflows? Um, so the, the shared data and workflows um, menu item um, has a list of all published workflows in Galaxy. And the one Alex used is this uh, first one, intro to RNN, um, which you then, um, if you click view, um, you can then click import, uh, and that will make it um, available in, in your workflow tab, uh, or you can click run directly from, um, from this interface. Um, um, but um, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm not really following the chat. Is there a bigger, more people having issues with uploads? Is that a Yeah, it looks we had, like, yeah. yeah, Mona's going to try one more time for her upload. But I think that things might be uh, fine for people. Uh, so it, we had a node failure, uh, not on, on Galaxy's direct control, but it's uh, our sysadmin has restarted it and shouldn't happen again. Great, awesome. Pleasure of a live demo. <laughs> so, exactly. But that was a fast solution, so all good. Um, so um, maybe while, while this is running, um, I'll just flip back. We have a couple more slides to, uh, um, to talk about some of the details. But again, uh, if anybody has questions, you know, chat works great. But if, if you have, uh, if you want to talk, um, feel free to do that as well. Um, so, um, I, um, I guess we have, um, so what we're using now is this, uh, usegalaxy.org server, which is located in the United States. I'll talk a little more about that in a slide or two. Um, but as I mentioned a couple of times, Galaxy is a, is a global project, it's a global community. And currently, um, there are three fairly large sort of, I wouldn't even call them national, they're more uh, continental uh, servers at this point. Uh, so the, the Galaxy US or Galaxy Main, as it's often referred to, Galaxy Europe and, and Galaxy Australia. And this is known as the Youth Galaxy Star Federation, where there's a lot of synchronization between the tools that are available because each Galaxy instance can have its own um, tools and its own policies, how much resources are available for users and such. Uh, these three tend to be fairly in sync. There's probably 10 more uh, that also carry the U Galaxy uh, uh, Federation uh, title, but they're not as large. They're, they are national. So there's Italy, there's Belgium, a lot of them in Europe actually. Um, and, and they too sort of have a, a similar uh, tool set. But in addition to these, you know, let's say dozen uh, use Galaxy servers, there are uh, over a hundred uh, other free pub public Galaxy instances. If you go to galaxyproject.org, um, we can do that. Um, um, you can see the list of, of these servers. Um, there's, uh, currently 167, and they each have their own uh, tool set. Uh, so oftentimes labs that develop software will um, set up a Galaxy instance um, to uh, uh, 
expose their own tools or to provide infrastructure to other members of the lab um, and, and uh, you know, just options that, that are out there. Um, let me see. Um, uh, we had a quick question a from Samantha. I just wanted to quickly jump in and, and get that there. Uh, yes, there's a very easy way to jump between an editor and the and that. And if we go to the workflow tab, you can click over here to the editor. And that little play button in the corner will take you right to the run page from there, uh, from the current state. Or also very useful, I'm going to actually go back, Ennis. If you are editing your workflow and you realize that you want to run a previous version of the workflow, you can also go here and go to a previous version of the workflow and run that and then save it between this being the save button here. And then you can press play. And here, and this is what, and this was showing the tool form here. Uh, uh, and this is what a workflow form looks like when fully expanded. Every tool here is set, which means that even if you have a workflow that you brought in from someone else, like here, you can edit each of the parameters individually. And then you can press run. Or, um, I see we have uh, John successfully uh, uploaded some data. Are we, still, and I think Mona, uh, Mona still has a, uh, an issue, or is it still an issue? Um, Looks uh, like it's Samantha. resolved. Okay, excellent. Um, so Samantha, um, not I guess no. So that's uh, I'd say that's good feedback. So from Ron, you'd have to go out on those back work. Yeah, I guess the, the browser back button will take you back to uh, editing. But what, what Alex was showing depending on what you're trying to edit unless you're trying to edit the layout of the the workflow um by adding tools or reconnecting the dots um from the the, the run form you can change the parameters right so um you know for example um here a, a default i don't know this output uh, property is 32 you can click the uh the edit pencil icon and then uh put a different number uh and the workflow will uh will run with that uh, so hopefully that uh, speeds things up. Um, the, um, again, so th this is um, these couple of steps run a little longer. So um, I'm, I'm not. A, I see a comment saying uh, it was a workflow view as I was trying to build a workflow step by step. I don't think I'm following. Ah, uh, um, I think I think I understand what you're talking about. So we're going to get to extracting the workflow later, which I think will be much more relevant to what you're asking. And once these jobs complete, um, we'll show you how to go from like if you experimented and ran a bunch of steps, learning about parameters or the tools. Um, um, you can then extract the workflow fairly easily. So we'll uh, show you that in a second. Um, again, so while this is still uh, running, let me just um, go back to the slides for a second. Oh no, so I'm gonna skip over the next uh, couple of slides. Um, or actually I just wanna mention this one, even though it looks very intimidating possibly. Um, it is the infrastructure that we are all using right now when running jobs, um, and it's by no means a requirement. Um, it is really a demonstration of what Galaxy is capable of. Um, so Galaxy, usegalaxy.org specifically, runs um, mostly on at Texas Advanced Computing Center. Um, and, and on Jetstream at Indiana University, and then accesses a number of uh, uh, supercomputing centers in the Access uh, Federation. And so um, it, it does that for both resource capacity um, and resource capability reasons. And so this diagram is really, or this deployment of Galaxy it is really pushing the boundaries of what Galaxy can do. And I, I mentioned this to say that it, 
it, for those that might either you know, have interest in deploying this uh, at their local infrastructure or such, um, there's it's very likely that Galaxy can do it. Uh, it may be complicated, uh, but it doesn't have to be. Um, basic Galaxy installations can run on a laptop, um, um, but I just want to point out that it is um, it is fairly capable in terms of infrastructure management. Management, and even though this is all this you know as complicated as this slide looks, we are all using it through just uh, uh, its web interface, and and hence uh, it eliminates that complexity from the end user's um, perception. Um, so while this is still running, Alex, maybe you can uh, talk a little bit about the tools and what we're uh, seeing here when we um, look at one of these tool forms. Yeah, actually, I'm going to do do you one better here. So very functionally, uh, a Galaxy tool is just a translation of the uh, of the command line form that you would see normally into a, a GUI interface. So we're going to go to this tool. Uh, and you can actually, this is probably a poor example because it's going to be a very complicated tool. We're going to go to one of these and you can see um, inputs, you have uh, integer based, you have text based, you have database, but on a fundamental level, all we are doing is translating between a command line and user inputs. Uh, and then we are telling it what to get back and we are testing it to make sure that it is uh that it's handing back consistent data that is proper to what uh to what you think you're putting in uh and that that also means that though as ennis mentioned we tend to specialize in biological data and biological um analyses this is, the galaxy is by no means um um required to do so you can use any command almost any command line tool that you can run Usually, if it is distributed via Bioconda or available in Docker, uh, you can run it in Galaxy and you can create a tool form. So I uh, wrap a lot of tools, which means that I translate a lot of tools from command line to this, but again, not remotely all biological data. This can also get very complicated. So let's go to one of these. Excuse me. Um, this conditionals are available everything this is just an extrapolation of the tool of the command line form uh, format into a GUI format we have uh, trainings available on how to do that as well on on galaxy training so jumping back to the ecosystem uh, we have the tool shed where 10 literally 10,000 uh, plus tools are available for you to download directly to your instance or available on any of the public instances that people have wrapped. Um, uh, and we have a toolkit entirely available for de tool development. Sometimes though, you don't just want to be using a command line tool. Uh, and for that, we have interactive tools. And that is a whole other um th thing to discuss i'm not going to get into how to write those but functionally galaxy has the ability to run entire um interactive tools such as our studio or jupyter notebooks within galaxy and be able to interact with them um as a standard tool uh, so i uh i was hoping that the workflow would have completed by now because the um the interactive tools are a really interesting concept um, that sort of expand the capability of Galaxy while not forcing you out of Galaxy. And the reason I, I was hoping it would, the, the workflow run with the, the jobs would finish is because when I ran this workflow for the first time, um, where you'll see this still great step uh, produces is this uh, confusion matrix, um, which was very confusing uh, for me as not a machine learning um, uh, expert uh, or, or anything of that nature um because i was really curious to see what the, the result is right we're looking at about the the data set that we're looking at uh i guess we didn't say anything about that but it's uh, uh 25,000 reviews from imdb um so movie reviews from common uh from general the general public and what i was curious about is to see um, are people mostly writing positive reviews or mostly negative reviews? And what instead this confusion matrix gives you is an evaluation of the machine learning model, but it doesn't actually give you um, 
a, a consumable answer in, unless you're developing machine learning tools. And so this is um, an example of where uh, interactive tools come in handy. And so this code that we're seeing on, on the slide here, um, we can largely copy and not largely, we can purely simply copy and paste uh, into uh, a Python instance within Galaxy um, and, and look at the results of this um, model prediction uh, and just visualize the, the results. And so as soon as the job finishes, um, we can we can do that. And again, as a demonstration of, of the capability in Galaxy, but for me personally, it was just uh, an interesting data point. Uh, I was curious out of 25,000 reviews, are people mostly uh, writing when they're happy or when they're um, not so happy about the movies? Um, uh, there's a question. Oh, Alex, you answered. Um, can you use can a tool use a comment environment? You wanna? All of our tools are running off of uh, off off of Conda based tools. Uh, so all of our a lot of our team is uh, integrated in the BioConda team. We also pull from Conda Forge and Base Conda. And for those tools that uh, that need to be run in containers, we use Bio Containers uh, as well as some of our own container systems. So everything is run as I said at the beginning in a standardized envi uh, environment. That environment happens to be Conda based. Yes. So, actually, Anis, could you? I'm going to quickly show that one uh, with the one of the models. Uh, wrong, wrong thing. But click. There we go. The same tool thing, the tool source that I showed at the beginning. It's really easy to pull that in. So both of those are are Bioconda packages or Conda for Python, Bioconda for Galaxy Machine Learning. Uh, you can also put in, uh, you can also build a bio container with several um, requirements in it, and then it'll run that in the same way, and it's the same easy integration. All right, go for it, Dennis. Okay, um, so we have um, about 10 more minutes you know, for, the, 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 for the top of the hour. I'm, I'm thrilled to see questions popping in. Um, um, there's two sort of big topics, I guess, we were hoping to cover. Um, and then, of course, if there's sort of desire and or if there's a desire for a, a more open discussion, we can either skip those or hurry up through those. So if somebody's got more questions, um, give it a few seconds. Um, otherwise, we'll continue and show you these two more concepts. Um, so, okay, I'll, uh, I'll carry on and feel free to ask questions. Um, um, so the, I guess we, we, in this particular analysis, so we can, you know, talk as the jobs run and not have to supply the parameters we originated, um, with a workflow, but, uh, imagine that, you know, you've gone through these steps and pulled up individual tools, um, set their properties, uh, for, for each, uh, each job for each tool. And now you're, let's say happy with, um, the, the completed analysis, but you now would like to try a different set of parameters or different input data sets and such. So instead of having to you know, go through these steps manually um, or build a workflow by dragging and dropping and setting the parameters uh, by hand again, um, Galaxy has this nifty little feature called uh, extract workflow from a history from an analysis. And so if we um, uh, click that now, we'll be presented with an interface uh, in the middle that allows us to select which of the history data points uh, or data sets uh, we want to include in our uh, workflow to generate. And then uh, once we've you know, selected, in this case, we want them all, we can click um, create a workflow and Galaxy will automatically take all those parameters, all the connections between the tools uh, and build a um, uh, build that workflow. So this isn't the one that Alex um, shared before that. This is a newly generated one. It looks the same, but it's uh, it's a new um, new instance. And again, so you can now edit it as you would the other one, but but it speeds things up uh, in terms of uh, repeating your analyses. Um, yeah. So uh, can we talk a bit about how to create a community and share workflow and data? Um, 
So uh, I, in my mind, those are two questions. One is, one is more of the technical nature, um, how to share things in Galaxy. Um, so if I'm in, for example, just on the homepage um, here, and I've created this history, uh, sharing is built into basically all elements of Galaxy. Um, so you can share uh, a history by simply going to the history menu and clicking this uh, share or publish uh, button. Um, by making it accessible, you get a link. And if I post that link now in the chat, uh, any one of you, which I'll do, any one of you can, um, can view that history and import it into your own uh, space. If, if I um, make this history publicly available and publish histories, if I go to this share data tab and go to histories, that same history will now be listed as uh, a history that's been published on this particular Galaxy uh, um, instance uh, with anybody that wants to view it, um, import it, build on it. Um, you can sim similarly, I guess there's a lot of history, oh, there it goes. So that's uh, the history that we just um, uh, created. Um, workflows have a similar capability um, and you can just um, click um, it, uh, um, share and the same concepts apply, so accessible and, um, and publicly available in the published histories. Um, so any other element that, that exists in Galaxy can be, um, let's say, shared through a similar means. So that, that I think is the, the easy part. Um, how to build a community. Uh, I think Claire and Sandra um, have a, a lot of experience with SGX3 um, in that space. Um, so you know, happy to have you um, can you know chime in with your versions, but that's where the the difficult part is. You know, you start by uh, uh, advertising capability, uh, advertising the data that you have, some workflows that were built, um, and, and go to conferences. Um, uh, just be vocal. I guess that's my best, uh, and be helpful uh, on the other end when people come with questions. Um, but that is a very much more subjective. Uh, answer. And then general also saying, you know, especially for reproducibility, you can not only share the data, you people can try it themselves. It, I, I think that is often also a really big benefit of having something like a science gateway like Galaxy. And as I was uh, thinking that uh, if there is a mechanism within Galaxy to kind of create a group of users that can do certain things as a group, is that um, possible? Um, so not as if you mean like Google Docs style, where you know we all could collectively work on a history. Uh, no, that um, um, that that does not exist. So. Um, Okay. It's, yeah, it mostly is a social construct, I guess, that uh, the communities form within Galaxy as a as a broad community. No, but what you can do is publish a single history and then have everyone build off of that history, and they can pull in their their own versions and build from there. So while you can't have the simultaneous work on it, you can have parallel work. I wanted to okay. say that it's not like Google Doc, but you can. Sh what I've done in projects like Mouse Grid, I. I've shared, you know, uh, data and workflows with, with yeah. the project team. Um, well, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to show you guys um, the uh, plot that demonstrates how many of the 25,000 training reviews are positive and how many are negative. Something is uh, not working at the moment um, with this uh, training group uh, infrastructure, but, you know, that's a good homework. So you have a reason to come back to and, and do you see for yourself um, what the what the results are. Um, Which one am I? Oh, sorry. Numbers are that one. That we just wanted to make later. sure that we could show visualizations in the center panel. They they can display full images as well. So if you generate uh, images, JPEGs, PDFs, whatever, at the end of a pipeline, you can view them here. You don't have to leave Galaxy or start up a Jupyter notebook just to be able to view them. Um, I see from Andy a question about um, 
uh, if Galaxy supports other workflow languages. Uh, so, at, I mean, what we saw now thus far and what Galaxy mostly relies on is its own workflow language. Um, there is partial support uh, for CWL, um, but uh, Nextflow or Whittle, uh, other languages, uh, no. It's been discussed, but uh, I guess it's frankly not uh, not been, um, you know, I guess it's seriously undertaken. Um, so for now, it, it's only the Galaxy workflow uh, language. Mm -hmm. And Mona, yes. If, if it's all green, it's good. <laughs> um, so uh, um, I think of the time some people might have to drop off. Yeah. So I, I don't want to interrupt if you still have some time, oh, I... um, Alex and Anis. So, so I'm not, but I wanted to at least say to people, so first of all, thanks, of course, to our speakers. And yeah, so we, we can share the slides. We will share the recording. Um, we are happy also, you know, I'm sure Anis and Alex are happy if you reach out to them with, with questions. We will have the next uh, SGX3 webinar in March on the 21st at 3 p.m. Eastern, and it's about expandable computing through the US OS whole. And with that, as I said, I would don't want to interrupt it here. I only wanted to, to say everyone who has to drop off now, um, of course, we understand we are aware of the time. Before um, people do drop off, I did just want to say, if you go to galaxyproject.org, we have dozens, literally dozens of ways to contact us, not just me and Ennis, but the entirety of the Galaxy team. So if you have any questions, please feel free <laughs> to reach out. And as I said, yeah, thank you all for joining again. The slides are here, uh, Alex and I are around. Um, so feel free to reach out. Uh, and again, do the homework on this code. Um, it's a uh, it's a nice little uh, uh, cherry on top, I think. Yeah, thank and, you and both so much for for also the demo and everything that is exciting. Mm -hmm.